Rob, Robin Holstein. Curious as to what your definition of success is and if Amanda is different. I've been following your channel for several months, watching and listening to replays while I do other things. Thank you for doing that, man. I listen to a lot of content when I'm out taking care of animals every day, and I listen to a lot of content uh, when I'm in the tractor, uh, skid steer, or mowing. I get a lot of stuff. If I'm by myself and not with Amanda, I'm listening to podcasts and stuff. Um, when we're together, I'm usually l playing videos on YouTube. Like, we're still listening to content while we're driving down the road. Um, I usually stream it to a Bluetooth headband so I can be working and listening as well. I rarely see a live, however, just because of the timing conflicts. I do a live every night at 9 o'clock on YouTube for anybody listening. Also, I gave two t-shirts as Christmas gifts, uh, one to the husband, one to adult son, and they both really liked them. The SOE True shirts, I was wearing that yesterday. Um, my last order was for a Cali compliant shopping bag. Well, thank you for including us in your Christmas and choosing us. There was tons of stuff you could have given away. Um, success. I don't know. By a lot of people's definition, I would be successful. Some days I wake up and I'm very happy and I would tell you I'm successful. And I think that that is just comfort and complacency. I don't think I've done anything great enough to be successful. Go ahead. What? I, I don't even know. Like I, I read these this morning trying to to get my thoughts together on it. And I honestly, like, I can't even come up with anything. Like, success is so many different things. It's knowing your bills are paid and having a sense of fulfillment in your life and being proud of what you do and being able to affect people in a positive manner. And, I mean, like, you could go on a million item list like success is going to be different per person but I feel like you know when you're putting positive shit out and you're creating something and you're making a difference in the people's lives around you I think that's part of your success I think a lot of people shoot too low absolutely right they, they just aim too low and they have no con oh that's for other people right they don't picture themselves there whatever whatever your achievement and I've made it once I've made a million dollars or I've made it once I can buy a Ferrari or whatever it is. As soon as you have that and you're capable of doing it, you realize there's something bigger. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a million, you better plan to make three million. And that, that's how that is, right? Now you'll see a lot of people that will point out every time I say some things like this, well so and so said that on their deathbed they wish they hadn't have done whatever as much or they wish they'd have spent more time with their kids. Okay, so on their deathbed, they said that, the last year of their life, maybe. What about the other 75, 85 years? Were they pretty fucking happy on yeah. those times, did, right? Did they All say those... that when they were driving that Ferrari? So everybody always points some shit out, and the people pointing that out to me, they're always not living a life I want to live. I don't even want to hang out with them. I don't even want them fucking breathing the same air I'm breathing. That's the money is not everything. It, it is. Those are the people that have to get up and be someplace every morning and do something they hate and then spend all their free time fucking. They, they w work a life to escape the life that they live to live a pretend life for a couple days out of the, the year, right? I don't ever get up and go, fuck, I have to do. I don't ever fucking get up in a morning and go, man, I don't want to do this. I just don't. So I'd pull, say I'm pretty fucking successful. I would agree. A, Say and you, you like you were kind of dancing around it, but in my opinion, the definition of success is being able to do whatever you want, mm -hmm. and that's different from personal goals or career goals because you're always going to want to do more, but you're doing what you want. You're trying to do more. I have a hard time like I have to warm up to it, right, mm -hmm. to be the asshole. But most of these motherfuckers, they need an asshole, <laughs> and. I lose, I probably lose more people than I gain in these conversations. But that's fine because I develop stronger people. They're going to be able, whatever they do, they're going to be able to continue doing when things get tough for them. And the people that we lose could never walk a normal day in any of these people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I would rather have strong people that are convicted and believe in what I believe in than just pussyfoot around, right? Bear was talking uh, yesterday, day before, 
of, about cussing, right? And he's, he, he has all the churchies. Fuck, man. I get, I get a ton of people that come over from Bear, and they're, what's your religious? But fuck off. Like, fuck off. Fuck off. If, if, you, if we have to have this conversation, um, just go ahead and put your dick right in that door and fucking slam it. And fuck off. If, why are you here? Right. If 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 we have to go to the same church or pray the same prayer, fuck off. And that's mm-hmm. uh, Bear wasn't saying that, but I know I know where this is coming from, and I'll and I'll get to that. Bear was like biblical cussing versus what your sense of a abil- you know sensibility your sensibilities right. What hurts your feelings versus what the Bible actually says, because when Jesus was braiding those whips and knocking those tables over and whipping those tax collectors. Like, they were killing motherfuckers in the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. You think they were saying something maybe a little bit akin to what was a cuss word back then? And he, he's like, I am sifting those grains of sand. I heard him say it again today. And he is watching people. He is consuming con. We go back and forth. He sends me stuff. I send him stuff. And a lot of times... I will literally have made a video and bear will have a video come out prior to the video that we haven't published yet. And we said the exact same fucking thing. We haven't talked about it. It's because we're moving forward. And the big theme you have heard is just do good shit, right? That's what Nick Ferguson likes to say. Do good shit. I'm like, just put fucking forth positivity. We have the same message. We just say it in a little different way, right? And I f- cuss a lot more. I don't even fucking some like right now. I just said fuck right there. I didn't. I don't even know I'm saying it. Right. It's just part of my vocabulary. Bear has dealt with more public facing people in corporate America and stuff in the past, and he can control it a little better. He's aware of it. But I'll bet you Bear would bring violence upon you much faster than I would. Right. I would. I would probably be too slow to bring violence, and Bear is going to just kill a motherfucker before he even knows he's dead. Right. So it, it's just a different audience, different people, right? But the message really is the same. Do good shit and keep negative motherfuckers away from you. If you, if you even allow them in near you, they are going to contaminate you. It, it, it's that. He says no more peasant shit. That's what his new one is. Yeah, he's come up with no more peasant shit. And, and I love it. I love the message of it. Mine would be a little more vulgar, right? I'm not going to sell as many as he's going to sell. But the message is the same. Yeah, I mean, so with the having to clean up the way you talk to deal with corporations, I guess I kind of get it, but not really. But when it comes to people who wear their religion on their sleeve, like when, when you describe this person, the first thing is they're religious. Right. Um, they're not supposed to be judging us. No. You know? so yeah. They pick and choose the fucking couple pieces of the Bible that they want to use to exactly. wield it as a weapon so that they... It's their way of going. I don't want to work hard, yeah. so I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna be around you because you say bad words. Yeah, which is against what they say. It's they authenticity do. versus sensitivity. Mm-hmm. It, why are you watching me? <laughs> you're watching me because I did a live with Bear, okay? Or you're watching me because I'm growing food, or you're watching me because I've had the same business for 35 years, or you're watching me because I've lost all of my money multiple times and made millions of dollars more while on probation, while in federal prison, right? That's why you're watching me. That's why you heard about me. Mm-hmm. Authenticity versus your sensitivity. And if you're watching me because of those things and bad words hurt your feelings. <laughs> you're uh, in the wrong place. You're not my people. You're not my fucking people. It just bugs me. Like, please stay away if you don't, if, if we can't speak the way we feel like speaking. But it bugs me when people judge Especially like you guys, you know? <laughs> they're not judging you. Yeah. It's, the, it's the excuse they use uh-huh. because you're saying things and their wife's like, why don't you work as hard as John? This, that's, what, that's really what this comes down to. Why don't you do those things this guy says? You watch him every morning. Yeah. Well, he says bad words, right? <laughs> I'm going to stop. That's really what it is. She's like, he's got toxic masculinity. That's r- yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what it is. That's what it comes down to, right? Uh-huh. So go do your thing wherever that is. Why are you here? It's the same thing with the masketeers, right? I'm wearing a mask, but you're not wearing a mask, so I need to go over to where you're at and yell at you because you might get me sick. If you truly believed that, why would you be in the aisle where I'm at? 
it's it, that's exactly what they're doing. They're doing the exact same shit. And if you look at their Facebook page, they're posting, talking shit about the guy wearing a mask, yelling at this guy, but they're yelling at him, they're yelling at a dude for saying fuck. Uh -huh. While they're on his social media, they could literally push a button and never see anything that person says again. But yeah. they won't do it. That's the same way with politics. It's become a distraction for the both extreme sides. Mm -hmm. Like they don't live their own life anymore. They just check on their team it's, to right. see what to be angry about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. literally. People come on. Right. For the most for the most part, our people are probably Democrats or on that that side of the beliefs. Right. But you'll get the dude that's way, way fucking over extreme. And he's like, Trump's a piece of shit. OK, do you own a business? <laughs> yeah. They will never answer you. Uh -huh. Right. And I'm and I point out while you don't like what Trump said and I don't know Trump, never met him, not been in the same room with him. But the policies he put in place while he was president. I retained more of my money. My employees retained more of their money. And everything that's happened after Trump was in president has made things way more Worse. fucking difficult for me yeah. and way more difficult for my family and my employees and everything in the world is just a fucking ablaze, right? That's not because of Trump. But they, they don't want to take that and have the other conversation. They just want to focus on that thing. But he said grab her by the pussy. I grabbed lots of pussies. Yeah. A lot of them. I don't, I don't understand. It, it's, it's the same thing, man. And you think you know somebody, and then you see them say some shit, and you're like, what the fuck are they talking about? Yeah. What, what gets me on the whole Trump thing is you're offended that he spoke in that manner about women, yet we have drag queen story time for our children. I don't understand how those two things can coincide together. Yeah, sorry. Because, because isn't sexualizing one bad? It, why aren't they both bad? You're sexualizing both of them. So I don't understand. Like, pick a side. Either we can sexualize everybody or we can't sexualize anybody. Like, one or the other. It's. I mean, we have a, we have a friend that made some posts today about, about uh, Tate. Toxic masculine. And the things she said about him... <laughs> She's only one step away from, I believe, the same things, right? Can we really do business and, and be friends at this point when you're saying that about him? Because as soon as he's gone, Who else who's the next focus? Be? Like I, I sent the Tate thing to Bear this morning. And then I sent the, what's how's it go? <laughs> when you're talking about that, and then she told me, it's the dumbest thing in the world, right? And people are like, why do you send this to me? I go, I send it to you because no matter what stupid shit you've seen today, you haven't seen anything this stupid. <laughs> and it's became, and, it, and we're watching it go viral, right? But the point is, and Bear said, so you, they framed Tate and you want to do a whistle rap about it. <laughs> and I go, that's exactly what I'm saying. I go, they framed Tate and you and I both think they framed Tate. And you and I are only three years away downstream from that being us they're going after. Because as soon as they go after these guys, they went after Trump, they're yep. going after Tate, they're going after all these dudes, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got these females and males. Good, I'm glad his misogynistic ass is gone. Okay, so when they're gone, what's next? Now that we've chipped that away, yeah. they're, they're not far removed from us. We're the next ones. Yeah. That's the next ones that you'll be saying that shit about. And that's why... I have to evaluate my relationship business-wise and friendship-wise with these people. Absolutely. That's like uh, when Trump was running for president the first time, he was talking about taking down Confederate statues, and he said, pretty soon we're going to have United States statues taken down. And everybody said, oh, no, that won't happen. And then it happened. Yes, yeah, of like course. This, um, progressive means that you have to keep going. So if you're progressive, yes. if you get what you want, you just have to keep going for more shit that nobody wants. And you know? And it's the uniparty, man. There's not, there's not two parties in government anymore. It's the uniparty. And everything that used to be, when we say Republicans, Republicans today are Obama-era Democrats. Everything has moved to the left, and everything's crazy. And the, the bar is not even where it used to be. It's, it's just absolutely fucking insane. <laughs> and, and I believe that. Like, when I just said I didn't, I've never met Trump, I've not been in a room with him, I got friends that are very good friends with his son. Donald Trump Jr. comments on my social media mm -hmm. posts oftentimes. I've had conversations with him. I'm not far removed from having a pardon from Donald Trump. Like, that's a very real thing. Conversations were had about that. 
And when you're mad at things he says, I've said all those same things. I've done all those same things. So am I next once you get rid of him? And I have to guard myself from that. And while you spout that out of whatever chemical imbalance or whatever angry thing you have going on in your life, I'm living a very real life, and I have had everything lost. And I've had pitchforks and fucking torches, and I've, I've had the mob after me, right? I've, I've been to prison over it. So once you get rid of those people, who are you coming after next? And that, that's how I live my life. Like, I live my life every day. I say things in jest and joke that I have to evaluate whether I will have a federal search warrant executed over those things. And we used to joke about it, and then it happened. And when I tell you guys, you need to live your life as though everything you say through text, through email, through private message could be put out public while you're joking with your buddies... Because one day it will be. Well, yeah, whenever, I mean, with, with Annie, it's a little different because if they really want to see what I'm sending to her, then it'll be funny. But sure. When I'm texting anything, like, I have, I always have it in the back of my head, this person might not be the only one that sees this. Yep, so, absolutely. Like, if it's something that I'm not sure about, I'm going to wait and talk to you in person about yeah, it. Yeah, what if, I mean, what if your daughter got a hold of the phone? Yeah. And started reading that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if your daughter... What if your wife sent, you're all at home, right? And your kid's phone's broken or whatever. So let's just play this out theoretically. Your wife gives her phone to your kid to go to school with. And the teacher takes the phone away or whatever and starts reading these comments. And you're saying nasty shit to your wife through private messages. And the teacher just doesn't like you. So she takes those and makes that public, right? And spins it as though you're saying it to your daughter. Mm -hmm. Would there be a police investigation? Fuck yes, there would be. Oh, yeah. Fuck yes, there would be. And when they clear you of it, if they do, are they ever going to come out and say they were wrong? They are not no, going no. to. It's always the first headline. Tate got That's arrested. right. It's, Nobody's it's, going to be talking it, about that he was released in a few hours. All this shit. And why are we focused on Tate, right? The people talking shit about Tate. They've never met him. They've never been harmed by him. They're really mad at their past boyfriend or their past spouse, right? So it doesn't matter, man. It just doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter. I would totally I'm sit about and to, have I'm about to name names team. and hurt some fucking feelings here. Well, let me, let me bring something up that that thought, that, that made me think about. Uh, is it Linda Guilfoyle, the assholes live forever? What's her name? Linda Feingold. Uh, Linda, Linda Feingold. Feingold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see a few weeks ago that she posted how, that, like that, that account posted that they're proud that they red flagged somebody because he was being an asshole. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, they, they made an Instagram post about how, look, I'm getting their this guy's guns taken away because he was an asshole. Yeah. yeah, and so that just did that's a, that's, yeah. That's not cool. No, not that's at all. all cool until it's happening to you. Uh -huh. And I agree with most of the stuff they post. You yeah. Know? They, oh, yeah. They clearly are business owners. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of the shit they post is funny. Um, where is Tim Pool? Yeah, gone. Like, I thought today he would be on because the Tate stuff, he's just missing. Tim Pool's not been anywhere in 72 hours. Mm -hmm. When you read the comments on the... I went and looked at the last video posted, and the next 100 comments are, where's Tim Pool? Has he been swatted? Was he killed? That's Where's he at? Swatted, maybe. Um, there's nothing there. And every one of them has a comment from a fake Tim Pool account. Hit me up, and we'll talk crypto, whatever it is, yeah. right? What's crazier is nobody's talking about where Tim Pool is. Mm -hmm. Like, where is Tim Pool right now? Good, bad, this is a publicity stunt. Hey, you missed us so much. Hey, come over. We're only doing it on fucking Rumble now or whatever. But where is it? Yeah. It makes no fucking sense. Um, and we have friends. Like, we're, people that move from Washington, Seattle, California, New York move here. And everything's good in the hood, and we're like, like our people. And then you see them do this. And that doesn't mean they're not our people. That doesn't mean they weren't having a bad day. They mean, that doesn't mean they're chemical bailouts. But I want to be like, your fucking liberal is showing. <laughs> everything, tuck that, shit back everything in. tuck that shit back in your asshole. Everything you fucking have been for the last year, you're letting that other shit show back out. Like, not okay. St. Jacobson, if catastrophe hit forcing you to start homesteading, prepping from scratch, today, 
Working with current experience knowledge, what are your top one to three priorities in each of the following categories? Food, water, shelter, construction, financial, security, miscellaneous, example, which animals, methods, systems, collecting, filtering, water. Build what and in what style and where methods of initial income. Fuck, I don't know, man. <laughs> That's a long one. Why? Because my shit burnt down. Do I have insurance that's going to rebuild it in a manner that now I have no excuse but to rebuild this building that we should build differently? Um, or is society collapsed, right? I don't have to pay taxes anymore. I don't have to fucking pay bills that are due because nobody can collect them. Nobody knows because it's ones and zeros. What's I don't know, man. Um our shit's set up pretty good. Yeah, I was going to say, you can lose a lot of um, materialistic stuff. Like, let's say the building burned down. You still have however many hundreds of thousands of gallons of water in animals. So, like, you're, you're going to be able to eat still. Here, here's the deal. You know? When we bought this, okay, if I, if I knew right now, we bought this property seven years ago. If I'd have walked on this, if I could be here and just go back seven years ago. I'd bring a bulldozer in here and bulldoze everything on this fucking property and put a taper on the property running towards the river. I would put in different water retentions. We would raise the building up a little bit. We wouldn't have this cliff out here. We would do a ton of different shit. But we didn't know that, right? We built this building as though society was going to collapse, things were going to end, things were changing, right? So we needed these trees here. We needed the shade to be able to grow the stuff we were growing. We needed we needed to work around that cliff, right? We needed to work around the hill. When we put the pond up there and we made it big, we did it because it was the high point of the property and water. We could open it up and move water anywhere we wanted to move it. And then a couple of years later, we realized, holy shit, this thing is a huge monstrosity out here. It looks like a giant volcano. We've never moved water. It leaks. We built it around the trees. We really need to deconstruct it. So then guys come in and I'm like, how do we fix this, right? Well, we could totally fix it. But they're like, why are we, why are we fixing this? Why don't we bring in a bull? Because it becomes a bigger project, right? It becomes, it's not a couple weeks. It's, it's months worth of scars and we have to reseed it. And it's not something we can do for 10 grand. It becomes a $40,000 project. I don't know. I'm pretty fucking, I'm okay with it. How <laughs> It is like, yeah, it works. Like you were saying, you didn't, you don't want that cliff there, but now you've got water at a high point that if you needed to move it, like yeah. if you leveled everything, you wouldn't be able to move that water, you know? Well, at least the way you have it. Right. Set up. But then again, with that said, it's back to the treadle sewing machine. When society collapses, are we really going to have no electricity here? We could move it by buckets. We could move it with full. We built this pond so that as the, the, a million gallons sitting back in this motherfucker, literally 65 feet deep. A lot of people have no fucking concept of what 65 feet looks like when you're standing down in it. It's big. But we built this side so that you can walk into it. We can walk into it as it dries. We can still bale it with buckets. And we can move water with five-gallon buckets if we have to do it. That's the one that it's like stepped. Yes. I thought that was the one up there. No, the one up there is not. It's, it is also stepped. It has a yeah. basin to it. When the water gets so low that you see the pipe, there's still three feet of water there. Mm -hmm. But when you go over here, it's 10 feet deeper. There's 13 feet of water here. Yeah. So there's still a large volume of water. What I don't like is that giant mound out there. <laughs> and we say, you know, grow grass, right? And grow crops and stuff. <laughs> We should push all of that dirt into that hole and then take this part and kind of level it so that instead of like this, it's more like this. Because we're, we're talking row houses, right? I want to run row houses and run chickens in row houses and have chickens in one row house for a couple months and then move them over and let it cool off and then plant in this, you know, six months later. Well, we don't have, we don't have the room to do it, right? We could do it back here. But back here, we have all the shade. So now are we going to cut all those trees down? What are we going to put in their place? And what if my neighbor decides to cut all his trees down back there? Now I have no fucking shade at all. So I have to keep... So out front, we could do that. And then, okay, so now you can get a 25-foot greenhouse, a 25-foot row house. Cool. It's cheaper to buy a 100-foot row house 
than four 25 footers, right? So do we put in fifties? Do we put in hundreds? Are we really going to market garden, right? What's your, what's the three crops you should do marketing garden? Number one is strawberries. Number two is um, garlic. Why strawberries? Because for $6,000, I can put in a quarter acre of strawberries, about 6,000 strawberries. I can put in all the water lines. I can put in all the weed banding. I can put in all the, all the inputs, everything. And we're going to have our, our strawberries for $6,000 investment, not including man hours and labor. We're going to take those strawberries and we're going to turn them into forty to $60,000 worth of cash in a six-week period if you have the market for it. That, because that's the math. That's the, that's the numbers that actually work, right? Well, I can make a lot more growing uh, lettuce green. Sure you can. It's a lot more work. A lot more fucking work. And you, it doesn't come to fruition in a six-week period. You don't harvest it and to consumer or to wholesaler in a six-month, right? We could do a, a lot better up there than we could back here. And that's back to we're limited by 10 acres of property, and we're not flat property, right? We don't have near the, we can make a turd look really good. Our shit looks really good, especially when you look at Nicole's property. Nicole's on three acres. It's full of rock. It's all kinds of crazy shit. She brought in all kinds of equipment to make it, I, I mean, I think, she's, I think she's pleased with it. Yeah. But if, if I was going to do that, it, it, it's the money thing, right? You don't have the money to bring in the big equipment to do it the way you should do it. Plus, you're there now, right? You're living. It's like remodeling a house you live in. We're going to remodel our master bedroom. Really? Where the fuck are you going to stay for six weeks? And that's if you're lucky and you're not doing it yourself, right? Yeah. So the real answer is when you bring in giant commercial equipment, dozers, excavators, it moves. Jack's like, I would need dynamite. Because <laughs> you dig three inches of soil out of Jack's place and it's bedrock. Yeah, or you need a 325 Komatsu with a fucking a pneumatic hammer on the front. That's how they take buildings and shit down. Everything's doable. It's how much money you want to spend and how much mess you want to make. And we're all waiting for the end of the world, so we need our shit to kind of work right now. Yeah. While I've been on this property for seven years, if I'd have just brought in a fucking big-ass bulldozer and moved everything where it should have been moved mm. seven years ago, five years ago, you'd have never known it happened. And we'd be way more usable. We'd have much more better soil. Everything would be fucking, it'd flow right. Everything would move. But we're always waiting for the end of the world. And that's the message that it always comes back to. I'm 50 years old. Every year of my life, something was going to wipe us out and kill us. I spent 10 years not paying taxes to the IRS and hiding because I was worried the IRS was going to find me. So I didn't have any social media footprint, Right. And then when I finally made it, I'm like, when I make next year, I'll make enough money that I won't have to, I'll hire an attorney and pay the taxes, right? I owed $3 million to the IRS. I paid them. I didn't file bankruptcy. That's the stupidest thing in the world to a guy that has money. Dumbest thing I should have, I should have fucking filed bankruptcy. I should have. I should have filed bankruptcy just like, but I didn't do it. I wouldn't either if I, if I had any other options. If I was your goddamn friend, you would. I because I have I did this man I paid eighty thousand uh dollars -huh. I paid twenty thousand dollars a week I paid eighty thousand dollars a month to the IRS for three years right yeah. and then the price went down a little bit but that's dumb don't let the price keep paying that if you can pay it because there's interest on that shit mm -hmm. a lot of a interest. lot of interest on that shit right so we're always in a hurry to do some shit with some money we don't have. So we're willing to take money from other places to make things work. And then you will find out that you, you're always robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? Now, if you're the dude that can do it, you probably know you are. Then do it by all means, right? Use money to make money. But if you're going to use money to make money and you're going to spend the money on other shit, you got a rude awakening coming, man. You have a fucking rude awakening coming. And I've done all the dumb shit. I mean, all of it. Like, yeah. you, you don't even, you haven't even scratched, whatever you think, you haven't even scratched the surface. But people won't listen, man. And that's the message, man. You're so busy buying three cans of green beans. Yeah. That you don't own a, you don't own, a, I, I haven't bought. You don't even bought, have a can open. I haven't moved out of California because I can't <laughs> afford property. Maybe. Maybe. That one, I, think I don't think that's that case. I don't yeah. think that's that dude. No, I don't even know. I, I know somebody said that already, but I think uh, moving out of California 
is something that scares people because even well, of course they it hate does. it, it's what they know. So let's be friendly with them. Mm-hmm. We don't need to drag them. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. Let them. Let them do, keep, keep doing you, bro. Mm-hmm. Keep coming, interacting. We can be friendly. When you're ready to get real, we're here to help. Yeah. But the truth is we don't want all these motherfuckers here. Yeah. Stay in goddamn California. And I know, oh, John said, God damn, oh, shit. I got to stop listening. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, I'm just. I don't think you're going to have those people here. I think some people don't realize who the real me is. And I like, it's like, I think that's the, you're seeing a lot of us be real, right? Mm-hmm. Me, Bear, um, Black Scout, Jack, like, Jack gets it too. Oh, you said, you said the F word. Fuck off. Like, you're. You're marginalized, whatever it is. Like all those people you talk shit about, the the blue hairs and the Kool-Aid hairs and the the tranny, you're the same motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You're just picking and choosing which one you're you're not okay with, right? Your world's getting smaller. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to harm you. We're not coming after you. We're not going to make your life difficult. Your world's getting smaller. You're just not going to exist. You're not going to be welcome. Mm -hmm. So those people that you're posting all the memes and shit about you're going to be stuck there with them and we just don't care it's it's literally atlas shrugged in a in a different scale if you don't know what that is you can watch those movies there's three dvds there's three movies on uh youtube you don't even really have to pay attention to them but it's the atlas shrug story we're moving forward and you're welcome to come with us but we don't care if you choose not to you're going to cease to you're going to exist in our world in a manner that you have access to speak to us. But until you're ready to be where we are, what does it matter? Like, do do you. If you're happy doing what you're doing, we're happy for you. We don't care. Max's path. About the generator purchase. Yeah, the whole intention with it was to have power when needed in my shed because there's no electricity to it. And I wanted to have something. Fully intend to go whisper route as well and have been looking for predators from Harbor Freight. So I was looking at predators because Harbor Freight just put all their predators on sale. Yeah. 25%, 20% off a couple days ago. I couldn't find a dual fuel predator anywhere on their website. So maybe they don't. Maybe I misunderstood that because I was going to go buy one. I'm I, like, we don't have a dual fuel. We we looked at it on the box. I thought we were in, in the store. I think it was a champion that was there. I don't think it was an actual predator. I couldn't find one anywhere on Harbor Freight site. I even searched it on the internet in the Google machine. Didn't find a dual fuel or a, tri- or a tri-fuel. Um, Harbor Freight can be hit or miss with tools, but they look and feel solid as hell. Yeah, well, a lot of them are U.S. made, and now Harbor Freight's doing that good, better, best rating thing. A lot of the Harbor Freight tools are actually, um, they're Milwaukee tools if you look at a lot of the hand tools, the wrenches and pliers and shit. Uh, they say they're stamped right on a Milwaukee. Uh, plus, like they, like they, like you, like, plus, like you said, they have been getting really good reviews. I experimented with alternate heating this weekend, it being so cold, and I had forgotten how good a job the old style kerosene heat. They really do, man. And I, I'm allergic to care. Are you really fucking allergic to kerosene? Or is that just some bullshit? Then fucking somebody propane. told you. Get a propane get, get propane heat, if you're rich. Propane propane's convenient. It's easier. It costs more. Um, old style kerosene heater tank on it lasted twelve hours. Yep, yeah, absolutely, man. We used to we used to light one in the kitchen, and we'd light one in the basement. And under the basement, we'd put it right under the bedrooms. It would kind of radiate up. Uh, and in the kitchen, we'd just have a fan down the hallway, pulling it into the hallway that came into the two kids' rooms and our room, and we sleep with the rooms open. Um, the house we live in is over hundred years old. It has a nine foot ceiling, so heating. Is in is heating it is no way no small feat yeah all these guys live sleep in these in a Mc, tent. all these yeah sleep in a tent all these guys living in these McMansions we're safe we're secure we got gate we got a gate and golf course and ponds cool you're gonna freeze to death got a fourteen foot fucking roof try to heat, try to heat that motherfucker yeah you're in for a surprise um other than those or the buddy heaters. What other recommendations do you have for portable alternate heating? Man, Buddy Heater is the most convenient. Kerosene's number two. Um, I don't think we need to be reinventing it. We know those work, right? It's a fuel source. What's the fuel source other than kerosene um, or propane? Fire. 
fire. Yeah. Coal. That's you really could do, it. you could do something with coal. Uh, you could do something with wood and wood. We can, I mean, we can go to the fucking golf course and cut the trees down if we have to. I mean, I'm, I mean, there, there's wood everywhere. Move someplace where there's wood. How much property mm-hmm. should I buy? Fucking 10 times more than you can afford to buy. I mean, 10 times more than 10 you times think you more need. more than you think you need. How much, like, you need five acres cleared to live in and, you know, grow in? Have the other 50 acres and trees, man. You're not going to wish you hadn't have them when that dude on the other side cuts all his shit down. Not to mention, you can buy a piece of property and you don't have to live on all of it. Yeah, people, there's $1,000 an acre. People are stuck on this $1,000 an acre property. There's $1,000 an acre property here. It's up and down and trenches and all kinds of shit, right? Big equipment will fix that. Big equipment costs money. Dirt work costs money. But everything can be fixed. Now, you also amplify other problems when you move dirt. Water goes places. It Water moves mountains. I mean, but it's all doable. It's how much money. Do you want to pay $5,000 an acre? You're going to get pasture land. You want to buy $1,000 an acre because you can't afford it? You don't have money? You're going to get dirt. up and down. But as you get more money, you can do more things. Start with a bigger piece of property. It's like, and, and don't. Don't not buy the five acre property and move here now because you're waiting for the fucking thousand acres you can't afford. Get here. Things yeah. will change. And here, wherever here is for you. Even even if, if even if it's a you put all your shit in a storage unit and you drive your camper that you've used once in the fifteen years you've had it and Go to a campground and stay there for a couple of months while you look for a piece of property. Whatever it is, you so many, do. so many people are like they, they believe the end of the world's coming or whatever's going to happen, right? But my wife won't leave. Then you must not really fucking believe the end of the world, or, or, I, I don't know what to tell. I can't help you. Yeah, I mean, I think this is where you're going. If the if the house was burning down and she didn't want to get out of bed, you're either going to make her get out of bed, or you're going to fucking leave her, leave her there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you married the wrong bitch. Um, Max, right on, man, with the generator. As long as you know it's loud, which I'm sure you know it's loud. Turn that thing on. How are you venting it to the outside? You said you're venting it to the outside. You're going to do it through the wall. Cool. The building will contain quite a bit of the sound. Um, What are you running in that? How big is that outbuilding? And what are you running that you need a a 9,000-watt generator, I think you said? You... And, and I know you can buy a generator for a thousand bucks. It's 9,000 watts or whatever. I've got, there's a lot of dudes right now. Um, Living Country Acres. I don't know. There's some some homesteading groups. There's a few of them that I watch, and they're running their whole outbuildings. I mean, we're talking 40 by 60 foot outbuildings with wood shops in them and raising quail and all kinds of shit. And they're running them off a of Blue Eddy system. They're running them off these battery packs I have with the exact same solar panels I'm running. And they don't make any sound charging them all the time on those panels because they have no power in these buildings so it's all it's there is all no solar. fucking power in the building the other thing to think about too when you're running power to an outbuilding allowed versus able you get a dude that knows anything about electricity or an electrician he can wire right into your box mm-hmm. and you can run that cable direct burial cable right in the ground or if you don't do direct burial cable you can put it in pvc pipe and you can run power we ran power I don't even know if I'm supposed to. I probably shouldn't even say this. We To other places. We ran power to one place, to another place, to another place. We put breakers everywhere we did, and we ran bigger breakers and bigger wire. But you can run. You can trench right in the ground and put wire right in the damn ground I got and, the and, and put it there. All right, guys, we're out. Episode 22. This went way longer than we thought it was going to be. Hope somebody got some value. Hope you got some entertainment. Um, tell your friends about this.